We need to find another place besides that one. What? There's a boba place we found that we love. Do they serve boba? They do, but it's a very particular black milk tea boba that is glorious. It's got a car it's caramely. Oh, do you guys have boba in India? I, I think it's introduced recently. Mm. Do you guys in India? Do you guys ever eat boba? No, it's not. I like boba. I do too. I, I liked it until I had this place. Now I love it. It is no joke. It's like <coughs> we're, we, we could be possibly getting addicted to it. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid directions of Corbin. I'm Rick. <clears throat> Instagram, Twitter, Juice Conte. Uh, today we got a Priyanka Chopra thing. Hey! Cool. This is actually something she just did for Variety. What did she do for Sorry. Variety? Vanity. Fair. Oh, what did she do for Vanity? It's oh, her photo shoot. Priyanka Chopra breaks down her career from Kameni to The Matrix uh, stuff. So She's just done a... She had a really beautiful photo shoot she did for Vanity Fair that was on her... Page, uh, really gorgeous shot. So uh, obviously, I've seen quite a few of these. Obviously, actors will come in and break down their yeah. roles throughout the career. Yep. I'm hoping they actually get to more than <laughs> just Hollywood stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> like right. <laughs> like I feel like there's many that we and we haven't even seen most of her stuff. Obviously, you should get to Barfi. You should of get course. to Seven Cool Muff. Of you course. should get to. Um, I'm guessing fashion. We haven't seen fashion. We haven't seen but fashion, but we've heard talk about critically fashion. acclaimed. Um, and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully it's not just like, um, what is it? What, what? Quantico and... Quantico and, and Matrix Resurrections. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully it's more than I mean, that's why... But that's why you do a film like that, <laughs> is sadly, is, you know, there's going to be... There'll be people who have never heard of Priyanka until Matrix Resurrections. Yeah. Go, yeah. if you're here because you just love Priyanka and you're not Indian... Uh, go watch some of her films. Go watch Barfi. Barfi. Go watch Seven Kun Maf with Vishal Bardwash. It's good stuff. Do yourself a favor. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> when I started, I failed. I've said the wrong things sometimes. I've done the wrong thing. I was a kid when I started. I failed. Hey, I've said the wrong things sometimes. I've done the wrong things sometimes. And I dusted myself off and stood up again and tried again, you know. It took me a long time to forgive myself for making mistakes, having failures, being insecure. I used to be really tough on myself because this business is tough. Hi everyone, this is Priyanka Chopra Jonas and this is the timeline of my career. Miss India. Little did I was taking know. these headshots for a scholarship program for a school in Australia and the photographer said, you know, you're really pretty, can I take some more pictures? And my teenage vanity was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, so he took some portfolio pictures, like mall shots, you know, soft focus with my hand like this, like all of those pictures. My brother had a brilliant idea that if I had to go for a pageant in Mumbai, which was away from our small town, he'd get his room back. And he suggested that to my mom. So I went for the preliminary round with my mom at 17 years old, kind of, you know, walked up the ranks, made it to the finals, went to Mumbai city, took part in the Miss India pageant and won it. And then I was sent for the Miss World pageant, not knowing anything. Suddenly I was, you know, thrown into this world where people knew me and then I went for Miss World, it was about 97 girls from different parts of the world that year and we were there in London and being terrified and competitive at the same time I kind of put my best foot forward and won that too and it just changed the trajectory of my career. I admire her from the bottom of my heart for being so considerate, compassionate, kind, giving up her life for people in India. I first came across acting when I was in the States in high, in high school here. I remember Fiddler on the Roof being one of the productions in uh, my high school. I remember being mesmerized. Heck yeah. I was like, how does one do that? I just did not know that that kind of grandiosity could be achieved 
in a moment. And whenever there's somebody who's won a beauty pageant, especially a prestigious pageant like Miss World, Miss Universe, Miss India, it just has been sort of a natural tendency for Bollywood or the Hindi film industry to gravitate towards them. You have producers knocking on your door because you're the it thing and that's what happened with me. My parents, who were both physicians, had no idea what to do with this attention. So we had a Chopra family conversation like we always did. And my dad asked me, what do you want to do? Do you want to try it? And I said, what if I don't? And he said, that's the thing. I don't want you to have a what if in your life. What if five years later, you know, you do what you're doing, you go back to college and you always have this regret at the back of your head of like, what if I did? What if I had tried it? So he said, give it a shot for a year, a year and a half. If you're terrible, you'll still be 19. You can go back to school. So the first few movies that I did was a Tamil movie called Tamilian. Um, and two Hindi movies, Andaz and The Hero. Both of them were touted to be really big movies and I remember walking on the set not knowing anything and thinking that acting was about the clothes that you wear and the makeup and hair that you get done. And then I walked onto a set and I had to think about how to take these words that were on paper and make them a person. And that was terrifying. I remember on Tamilian, which was really difficult for me because I did not know Tamil as a language. I was learning it phonetically, memorizing it, understanding the meaning behind it and then saying my lines. But I loved watching my co-actor Vijay and he was one of the few, mm. first few influences in my life. He had tremendous humility on set. Once he came on set, he wouldn't leave set. And that's something I do even now. I very rarely will go back to my trailer in between shots, unless it's a really long time that I have to wait. I'm usually hanging out on set. I like to understand why we're taking Good. different shots. I like to speak to the crew. I like to kind of be in the mix. It's not me. <laughs> think about culture, whether it's in America or in India, you know, it has changed. I can't even imagine the clothes I used to wear at that time. But at that time, um, big heroines that would always be in the mainstream commercial movies had to be a lot more coy, pure, good girls versus my character in Etras was a bad bitch. At that time, it was a lot. <laughs> This movie was made by a to duo called Abbas Mastan, who are very well known, very well respected. They were making a remake of Disclosure, Demi Moore's Disclosure. And because my character was a sexual predator and I was 21 or 20, 22, people were like, oh, if you play like such a sexually charged character, I don't know if um, your audience will be able to see you with that kind of purity and that dream girl who's a good girl, the girl you want to take to your parents basically versus the one you want to take to your bed. Um, <laughs> and that imagery at that time was something people thought was important. I was shocked with the kind of reception that I got after the movie. I'll never forget we were at the screening and I was terrified because I was like, I was sort of embarrassed too because my parents were watching it as well. And the movie finished and people stood up and they started clapping and they started looking at me. And there were other people in the movie who were massive stars, but I walked out of the theater and people were standing outside to congratulate me. And it was such a crazy moment in my head because I built it up in my head that, you know, I was gonna be canceled after this movie and no one's ever gonna work with me again, but it changed my career. And that movie really opened up my eyes to wanting to, you know, delve into things that made me nervous, made me scared. I kind of figured out that I worked well under pressure and it changed my choices after that. Roman, 
I looked for a challenge. I wanted each person, each woman that I play to be her own person. And Dawn was a really pivotal movie in my career at that point. It was a remake of a very popular Hindi movie by the same name oh, called Dawn in the 70s. And to step into the shoes of Zina Taman was terrifying in itself because she's an icon. But I wanted to bring my own, you know, vibe to it. And I remember speaking to my director, Farhan, and he really wanted me to learn Tai Chi and sort of um, have the body language of a fighter, someone who could, you know, who was confident. And it was one of the first times that I had started doing stunts, not knowing that I'd be doing them for the rest of my life myself. I just took to it. I, I took to how learning something would change my body language, how learning a new skill would make me different as a character. And then that's something I would continue to do for many, many films after that, whether it was languages, dialects, um, you know, many different kinds of skill sets that I would learn. Nice. Hey, then, Vishal. Sure. was made by one of my favorite filmmakers in the world. His name is Vishal Bhardwaj. And it's a predominantly male movie. I was probably one of the most pivotal female parts, if not only, in the movie. And it had like nine scenes or something. That's it. I was like, Vishal, sir, this is such a small part. <laughs> I want to do a full <laughs> movie with you. And he was like, trust me. Just trust me see what I do with you. And I did. I had to learn a new language called Marathi, which is the local language of the state of Maharashtra in India. And uh, I played a very deep-rooted Maharashtrian girl. So I had to learn the language and specifically the dialect from the place that she came from, but also have to strip myself from the glamour that I had sort of collected by doing movies like Dawn or Aetra. Which is why Vishal over would time I was see her playing all of these really what you can do. interesting characters, but very polished mm -hmm. characters versus Sweetie was unraveled, loud, brash, held a machine gun if she wanted to, used vile language and was feisty. And I had so much fun. <laughs> You're just a good filmmaker, Michelle Barton. She was great in that. Kamine again pivoted my career in a different direction where I started taking on a lot more indie movies, a lot more character driven parts, and Sweetie was one of the first few where I started feeling comfortable without the hair, the makeup, the clothes, the, the glamour of it all. I just sort of became my character. <laughs> when I played Mary Kong, I was very skeptical taking it on in the beginning because she was a living, breathing icon and she made place for so many female athletes. And plus, I looked nothing like her. She comes sure, from the northeast of India. Nothing and I like am, her. It's a weird you know, casting. From Very weird. Northern India, and we physically don't, didn't look alike. In hindsight, yes, it should have probably, you know, the part should have probably been gone to someone Agreed. from the northeast. But I was just greedy as an actor to be able to get my hands to tell her story because she inspired me as a woman so much, as an Indian woman so much, as an athlete. Um, and. When the filmmakers were insistent I do it, I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. I went and met Mary, I spent time in her home, I met her children, I met her husband. I had to spend almost five months training to learn the sport, which is not easy, by the way, for anyone who's not tried it. That's hard to do. And to physically alter my body as well, um, to get into an athlete's shape. So physically it was really tough, mentally it was really tough. And because I physically didn't look like her, I decided to embody her spirit. So I spent a lot of time with her so that she could educate me about what her choices were, why she made the choices that she did. Um, and to me, it's one of my most special movies um, that I've ever done because of working so closely with her. None of the threats today were real. I've never seen Quantico. Have you ever seen Quantico? I have. It's actually a good show. Go on. 
The exercise was built on information provided to us by you. But information is only worth anything if you trust the source that it came from. I've been acting in the Hindi language for such a long time, and culturally, that's very the different. The first episode probably caused a lot of ruckus in India. Speaking in English and acting in English, and the whole being someone who's been born and raised in America versus being someone who's been born episode. and raised in India, those are two different girls. So now I had to quickly understand what that girl was like, um, having spent time in the States as a teenager, it wasn't too alien. So I got a dialect coach to work with me for my American accent and I walked in and I remember holding my breath for a second and being like, oh shit. I went to the bathroom and this was one of those moment, moments that you would probably see in a romantic comedy, you know, where the actress is like looking at herself in the mirror and saying, you got this. <laughs> but I swear to God, I did that. I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, you're like 40 movies old. Your movies, some of them, have like blown up the box office. You kind of know how to do this. And I had to like really tell myself that, that I know how to do this job. Like this is what I do. This is like literally my profession. Contained myself, had a sip of water, walked into the room, did the best that I could, got the job. <laughs> Whew, thankfully, when again, it changed the trajectory of my life because um, I was, you know, the first Indian actor ever to headline a, a network TV show. and. To have the, someone the main South Asian, it's her show. It's her show. Yeah, a mainstream character. She is the character on mainstream TV or movies was very like you didn't see that a lot at all. Even now, you know, there's just a few of us that are sort of holding that flag strong. But at that time, there were very few, and you know, the pilot happened. It did what it did, and kind of changed my life. You were playing us, and you even left clues in each room to taunt us. And you held the key to all of it in your hand the whole time. For people who have been to India, you will understand how different, you know, America as a country is and India as a country is. Two of the biggest movie industries in the world, but two completely different cultures. And as an actor, I talk with my hands. <laughs> I'm loud, I'm expressive, I'm big. And that's what our movies are, you know? Indian movies are big, loud, expressive. But when I first started working on Quantico, I used to hear from my directors. Tone it down. You know, Priyanka, just, <laughs> let's like, just take it down a little bit. What does that even mean? <laughs> am I decibel, am I loud? Like, you know, just maybe just, a little smaller. Just give us a little more earphone. I heard that a lot when I first started acting in America. I kind of had to pivot a little bit into understanding as someone who would have grown up in a different culture, how they would react to a situation versus how someone who had grown up in a different country, yeah. how they would react. So it took me a lot of observing, understanding, working with acting coaches and listening to filmmakers, watching my co-actors. Um, with the choices that they made, exactly how I had done 10 years ago when I first joined Bollywood movies. Why would a simple man be close enough? Damn it! I got out, Bara. What is it that you want to do? We skip Barfi. I want to do something you and Asok Sam. No, okay, stop. No, no, stop saying that. That's why this Raka? gas system no, thing is total yet. bullshit. Yeah. When I first read The White Tiger, the novel, I was like, this movie can't happen without me. I just, I love this movie too much. So I called, I called my agents and I offered my services and I said, I would love to EP the movie. I would love to push it. I'd love to market it, help market it, you know, support it as much as I can. So it gets, it gets as many eyeballs as it can. So I met Ramin Barani, I chased him. <laughs> Uh, when I want something, I really do go after it. I auditioned for him like two or three times for Pinky. Once we did a reading, just him and me too. Um, and I almost had my husband holding the camera, but <laughs> Ramin was like, no, that'll be too distracting. I really worked on, on wanting that movie because I reached a point where I was craving, you know, for the artist in me to feel unsure and to feel, you know, like I had to dig deep. I, I just sort of needed an immersive experience and that's what it was and um, I'm so proud of that movie. You know Mukesh tried to stop Ashok from marrying me because of this cast thing? Well fuck him. And fuck that. We met a long time ago. Good morning. 
17. My father knew we'd meet again. Though he would have wished for happier circumstances. You watch again? You know, no. Matrix 4 is as mainstream as it gets. It took 10 years, but here we are. <laughs> it took 10 years of knocking on doors and making introductions and, you know, sort of hoping to be a part of mainstream global pop culture and working towards it. And I feel really grateful to you know, be getting those opportunities and I feel sort of an acceptance with my um, colleagues and that's a really great feeling. But yet, walking onto the set of Matrix 4 with the legacy that that stands for, I just wanted to stay quiet and be a fly on the wall and watch everyone do what they do. This is an incredible cast and an incredible movie that had come together and I just remember being starstruck the whole time. <laughs> I'm sorry, you knew what happened to him. You knew that he and Trinity both were alive. And you didn't tell me. There were times I doubted my decision, Iobi. But I needed you. This city needed to be built for your people as well as mine. The world the Wachowskis have created. No idea what they're talking about. <laughs> no I haven't seen two or three. Like it's changed clue. movies for me, for so many people in our generation. And I was just really, really grateful to be a small part of such a large legacy is just very, very exciting. <laughs> when you become a public person, the court of public opinion Skipped is over too many. where yeah. everything is decided for you. I was okay with that for a very long time. Barfie, I thought that was Stephen part of Kuzma, the job. I thought two of her that, best performances. You know, I had to live up to people's expectations, yes, but more than that, to people's opinions. And now on the other side of 35, I realized that that was futile, you know? People's opinions don't make your career. What you do between action and cut, that'll make your career. Great. Took me a long time to understand that. Hmm. Priyanka seems pretty happy. Yeah. Are you happy? Yeah. Because she's happy? Yep. If Priyanka's <laughs> happy, I'm happy. I'm, I'm still upset, though, that you skipped over, I think... Uh, Barfi, sure. for sure. Barfi might be her best performance. And Seven Kun Maaf, which I, once again, Vishal Bardwaj, that should have been the Vishal Bardwaj film of hers, even though I thought she did a good job in Kamini. Yeah. I think that, maybe it's, was that the first time she had worked with Vishal? Kamini. Kamini? Yeah. Is that the first time she worked yeah, with him? Yeah, I think so. so I maybe, think so. Maybe that's why they picked that one. I think so. Um, what's, um, I feel like those, Seven Kun Maaf, she put on a great performance. Yeah, well, and she that was, was fantastic in that. I, and I could be wrong, maybe, no, I, I, I thought, I thought Kamini was before Seven Kun Moff. And for, this is obviously going to get a bunch of American eyes that have never seen yeah. any Indian films. Yeah. And so I feel like you should have put some of her <laughs> best work. Yeah, for sure. I, mean, I, I was glad she said that, uh, in, in retrospect, the role of Mary, Mary Com, Com should have gone to somebody else. Yeah, um, because yeah, obviously she knows. She looks nothing. Yeah. Absolutely. That's like if I tried to play like George Washington. Yeah, something. <laughs> or me playing George Washington. Yeah, because at so, least you're a closer proximity. Some white, I guess. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah you're, 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 more, you're more leaning toward European English. It's than... like if you try to play Carrot Top in a film. Right, <laughs> exactly. It just doesn't work. Uh, but I, I mean, I guess you can. Do you know, I, did you hear who Daniel Radcliffe was playing? Daniel Radcliffe? He's, no. he's going to play in a biopic. No. Weird Al. Daniel Radcliffe? That so does not surprise me for the choices that man makes. Yeah. He's That's like, so right in the wheelhouse of a Daniel Radcliffe decision. Play in a biopic, weird idea. <laughs> I, I want to see it. Yeah, I see it too. I want to see Anyways, it. But yeah. anyway, uh, by the way, if you don't know what she meant when she said, sometimes abbreviations are used a lot. When she said she wanted to be EP, she meant executive produce. Yeah. Somebody may have not understood that. And another thing that she said that's very important for artists, if you've noticed this running theme throughout all of her decisions as an actor, and even as a producer, it's been, what's scaring me? Mm -hmm. What's the risk? What's the thing I need to feel? She learned, part of the reason that's an important decision to make is because it keeps you humble. If you're doing something that scares you, you realize this might not work. And, and that keeps you in a place, you. and it, it, it pushes you to be excellent because you don't want to screw it up. And it also keeps you in a place of humility because you know that if it does work, it was despite what you were gonna do messing it up. Yeah. And you recognize it's much bigger than yourself. So, very wise woman. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, very great, I would love to actually talk to her. Oh man, I would love to talk to Priyanka. I just about, love hearing her talk about how her evolution and understanding the craft and the differentiation between what happened in Indian cinema versus American cinema. And even today, because after reading her book, 
which is a very quick read. It's a really good read. Her, her passion, she loves acting and that's grown over time. And I would love to talk with about the evolution of her understanding and what she's done to become a deeper appreciator and practitioner of acting. Yeah. 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 That's great. Uh, and let us know what the next Priyanka film we should watch. Fashion wasn't in here, but I do hear that that, that yeah, one. We get that one all the for time. For her and uh, Meryl. Uh, Kangana, sorry. I know. Uh, <laughs> he said it. <laughs> and Priyanka, work with Fashal again. Yes, please. I think everybody should work Everybody with should work with Fashal. I mean, there's Blood a couple. Of, uh, everybody should want to work with him. Everybody should want to work with Anurag. Yes. I feel like. There's certain directors that will bring out the best in people. Example, Quentin. Mm-hmm. Quentin brings out some of the best performances. Kurt Russell's best work is with Quentin Tarantino. Mm -hmm. Bar none. Oh, yeah. Uh, so there's just some some directors that really bring out the best of people. And it also has to do with those all those people we just mentioned are all writers as well. Correct. So they, they know how to write good dialogue and good characters. <laughs> yep. And they can see outside the box. Like, it takes a Vishal Bardwaj to see a Priyanka Chopra and say, there's far more to you than just the pretty face. This is somebody who has the capacity to play some deep work, and I want to show it to the world. He's done that with many actors. Shit. Yep. Poor. Yep. Who was known as Chocolate Boy. Yep. But obviously, he knew his father, and so yeah, it's like he probably had an inside. Just come like, on, this guy knows what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, you're fine. It doesn't take a genius to <laughs> realize that man knows how to. Act. That's like the easiest like lob you can get. It's like, who do I want for the uh, earphone? Should we get earphone? I don't know. I don't know that he can pull this one off, guys. <laughs> That's never been said. Never. I don't think it's ever I don't think said. it was ever a question of whether or not he could do anything. It was a matter of, will he work with us? I did hear, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, that he has a couple of little films that might be good for romance month year fun. Oh, please. That'd be good, right? That'd be wonderful. See him in that, that style of this, role? A sad day will be the day that we see the last piece of his work. Because I love knowing right now that there's work of his I haven't seen. work, yeah. But when I have seen it all... That'd be that, sad. It's why I've been so slow. There's still a couple of things of Robin's that I haven't seen, and I kind of don't want to, because I don't want to know I've seen everything he's done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you still haven't seen his penis, so there's, there's I don't that. ever want to see his penis. Well, I do. Let us know if you've seen Robin Williams' penis down below. Please don't. <laughs>